So, in last class, so null sense is what it says that um, uh, Hilbert null sensor. So, it says that uh, points in uh, in affine space you have some one to one correspondence with uh, maximal ideals, right. We assume a, a k is algebraically closed. So, in particular, if you take a algebraic subset, so now you know you know the quotient which is nothing but k v. So, this is nothing but k x 1 x 2 x n mod i v the idea that. So, there is a so maximal ideals of here are points here right because any point here will correspond to a maximal idea and that maximal ideal will contain uh, the. So, this will say this. So, k algebra and the maximal ideals of that k algebra corresponds to the points of that algebra points of that. <coughs> so, now we want to define something uh, be mapping between algebraic sets whenever you are define some algebraic sets. Now, you want to understand how these two algebraic sets are related like in topological space whenever you have two topological space you want to know whether they are homeomorphic or what is the relation between x and y. So, to find between two objects you need to define what is a map. So, that one has to do, do that. So, so the first baby definition which is uh, we will slowly uh, make a more uh, complicated more uh, structured, but uh, first you take suppose V is a algebraic sub algebraic and W is in A M K hmm. two algebraic sets. So sometime I will say algebraic set as algebraic variety. Okay, I will not distinguish between algebraic set and algebraic variety. Sometime I may say algebraic sets and algebraic variety. Yeah, I mean yes, not mm. only thing I have to be little careful when I say affine variety. Generally, some people say that affine varieties they are also algebraic variety. Some people think that affine variety are irreducible algebraic variety. So, Hartshorn for example, he assumes uh, algebraic variety affine variety as irreducible algebraic subset. Okay. So, now how do you define see in algebraic geometry only thing you allow is the polynomial fun polynomials. So, a map a mapping between uh, 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 a mapping mapping when I say mapping means set theoretic map a mapping f from v to w is said to be Uh, regular map or morphism hmm, sometime it is a regular map or regular uh, morph or regular map or regular morphism uh, ok let us say regular morphism. If there exist m polynomials f one, f two, f m in n variable such that f is extended. to a morphism f tilde from uh, 
So, morphism between affine space means uh, it is just given given by uh, polynomial maps. So, in some sense, so this is f tilde is nothing but f tilde v. Say you take v is nothing but f one v up to f one. Okay, so this means that you have two algebraic subsets. You say that it is a morphism if there exists polynomial f1, f2, fm such that the function, the map f from v to w, you can extend it to uh, uh, the entire affine space from a n k to a m, and such that when you restrict, so extended means f tilde. If I restrict to f tilde to v, then it is equal to f. See, there is nothing unique about this. Because if I take some function g, if g belongs to the uh, say I, I, ideal of the variety, then f1 plus g, fm plus g, this will define the same function on the because g vanishes on v. So, this will also define a function say f double tilde from a n k to a m k. But when you restrict f tilde, uh, f double tilde restrict to v and f tilde they are same, right? Because g vanishes on iv. So, what I am saying that if I take f double tilde, define it as a n k to then f double tilde restricted to v is same as f restricted to v, f tilde restricted to v. So, they exist, so there is nothing unique about it. So, if it is extendable to the entire affine space by and the function is given by the polynomial, then you say it is a morphism. So, basically it is some you have a bunch of polynomial and you restrict it to v that is what it means. Okay. So, now, now you say it is a now if I if I if I, if I identify k with the algebraic set a, the affine space a 1 k, then if you have a map a, a morphism from v to k, then these are called regular maps. When w is affine line, uh, the morphism between a uh, variety algebraic set to the affine line, these are called regular maps. Uh, v not v, v is subset of some a n k. Okay. So, the yeah, here m equal to 1. You take m equal to 1 and you take w to be the entire k. Here is here the, this is your w. So, then these these are like continuous functions. When you have a topological space, then you when you say real topological space or complex topological space, then you consider the functions right, function space. So, these a elements are the function space. So, so first of all some, some points, some remarks that composition of morphisms are morphisms. this is easy to see. That means, if I have a map morphism from v to w f and and suppose I have a map g from w to w prime, then I can compose g composition f, then you can say you can so, uh, so I leave it as exercise. Okay. So, if f and g are morphism, then g composition f is also morphism. Okay. And addition of morphism is add uh, morphism. Addition of morphism, multiplication of morphism, mm, okay. Now, multiplication you have to be little careful, not the uh, so addition, okay, uh, not morphism, sorry, addition of mm, regular maps. When the uh, the image is k, addition of regular maps 
multiplication of regular maps makes sense and they are regular and they are also regular. Right. So, so regular maps. So this is so this same this implies that regular maps. Forms a ring. Forms a commutative ring. That means if I take two functions, say f and g, from v to k, right? So f plus g you define as f plus g at x is nothing but f x plus g x. And f g of x is defined as f x times g x. Now this, of course, the constants are there. So, so this will form a commutative ring with identity. This is a commutative because, after all, k is commutative. Commutative ring with identity. And uh, and this commutative ring. Uh, I denote it by uh, again by k v. You start with the algebraic set. Now you can you define regular regular maps and consider set of all regular maps on v. You call it k v. I am denoting by by k v, and I will show that this k v is same as the isomorphic to the k v, which is k x one x two x n mod. Yeah, viewed as yes, regular coordinate ring of that uh, okay. under yeah. But you see that when you when you define that there when when v here uh, when you when you define k v here, you defined as k x k t one t two t n modulo i v. Right. So it depends on the embedding. See now you want to define something like abstract uh, uh, variety. You should not depend on um, that. We are going towards that. So here, so this is way one, one way of defining K V. But this is another way of def this is here also we are uh, considering one embedding. V is a subset of. But you will see later after some time we will define abstractly what is a affine variety or what is a algebraic set. Okay, I will come to that. Yeah. So, so, so let's uh, let's so now I define. So th this KV you should not mix with the KV which we I defined earlier. So here, yeah, but they will be all isomorphic. So KV you define as the ring of regular functions. On V. Assume everything is algebraically closed. With uh, non-algebraically closed field, also one can define there. But for simplicity, let's assume we'll use hilbert nulls theorems as here and there. So assume. <coughs> and and another thing, I will denote a category. So affine K. So here objects are algebraic sets, algebraic subsets. Of say some affine space for some n and morphisms are regular maps, regular morphisms. Okay. Is it clear? 
<coughs> so we define a category where uh, the objects are algebraic subsets, but uh, point is that an algebraic subset can be a n is sitting inside a n plus 1 or a n plus 2. So, if I take a algebraic subset V, it is sitting inside A2 or A n, it is also sitting inside A n plus 2. So, but when we define something, it should not be does not depend on embedding. So, you, I mean, because otherwise things become more, you, you have more data. The embedding data also, if you want to carry, then it becomes things becomes more, which is redundant. I mean, I do not want to differentiate between two things which are isomorphic. So, that is why that is a that is a motivation to define why what is a abstract variety. Okay. So, so here is a so this is what the, the remark. So, when I say algebraic set means it is embedded into some a, a some affine space. So, a remark is that different algebraic sets um, uh, even embedded in different space even embedded in very different we will see example when we will do tomorrow we will do some examples in next lecture we will see all these different uh, affine affine space. Defined algebraic sets may turn out to be isomorphic. So, so where, so what does it? So isomorphism means if you have a map from V and W, if you have suppose it is in A n K and it is in sorry. it is in a m k then uh, it is a isomorphism if you have f is a isomorphism if you have some g w to v which is in a n k so the g composition f and f composition g both are identity if g and b, if a, both are regular all are in the category of algebraic sets then you say this is isomorphic right isomorphism definition so now what we say that if you can have two algebraic set they may look very different they may be embedded in two different affine space but they may be isomorphic so if they are isomorphic you don't want to differentiate them so that is why I mean you should the whatever definition you should give a variety it should be embedding free it should, you should not start let x be a subset of see when you start even in uh, in in topological so let x is a topological space we don't say that let x be a topological space in Rn right so topological space is a, it's a itself is a, is a is a object so it should not depend on embedding so that is uh, that is one uh, need why this definition needs to be little tweak. We have to be little uh, bit more subtle. So, I will come to that now. General definition of abstract variety. Why it is getting embedded, yes. Because if we check, for example, mm. Yes, but yes. A plus a it, it is a closed subset. Yes, yes, yes. <coughs> okay. See another way of uh, before doing that one can also define this morphism between algebraic varieties. Mm, I say that suppose uh, um, 
सपोज एफ इज ए मैप फ्रॉम वी टू डब्ल्यू वेर वी एंड डब्ल्यू आर एलजेबिक सबसेट्स this is a morphism of algebraic sets or algebraic varieties if uh, for every g or let's write if uh, you write f star uh, f star of g f star is a map from k w so when i write okay capital k capital k w to capital k v so what is this map k w is a set of all regular functions right so you take some function say g you uh, define it to be g composition f first go to w and then apply g then so it is a function from v to k and that's a regular function if uh, so this is how f star is defined if f star g is regular uh, map for all regular all g belongs to uh, k w and this is also another that this is a k algebra if this is a k algebra homomorphism um, so okay so okay let me just say so a, a map from two algebraic sets v and w is a morphism if or if and only if we can write if and only if the the induced map f star from k w to k it is it, this defines a map that means if it takes any regular map on w to regular map to v so this is another way of defining what is a morphism <coughs> so first of all this mm, so if that is a so first of all this f star is a k algebra morphism if that is the case then you show, show that Uh, f star is a k algebra homomorphism which definition yeah this is equivalent definition yes yes what that's what i'm saying that this is another way of defining regular morphism between two algebraic sets you say that a map from v to w first you define regular function hmm so if if it takes every regular function on uh, uh, on w so regular function means a map from w to k regular function from w to k to k, uh, v to k by composition and that is true for every if that is the case then f is a morphism between v and w this is another way of defining hmm. and first of all this because sum of regular functions are regular and multiplication of regular function is regular so you say it will be a k algebra homomorphism so f star of g plus h will be f star of g plus f star of h the way the composition is defined and multiplication also it will be defined like that. so it is a so it is a k algebra homomorphism this is very important so a map of a map of algebraic sets gives you a map of k algebra uh, k algebra map in the opposite uh, direction if you have from v to w this gives rise to a map now you will see we will see the converse so if you have a k algebra map and if you have two k algebra say k uh, a1 and a2 then that will give rise to a some map of algebraic sets so so that's the first uh, but here one should notice that this k algebra this kw and kv 
whenever you start with a algebraic set, the k algebra associated to that, they are a finitely generated k algebra. So, so notice, so this is remark. A k algebra, the key, a k algebra arising from a from an algebraic set is a finitely generated, the finite is a finite type. So, finite type means finitely generated, finitely generated k algebra. And another thing you know notice that this k algebra does not have nil potents because they are after all quotient of k x 1 x 2 x n. So, these are does not have and they do not have and and they do not have yes 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 because otherwise it is not because of Hilbert knows to answers. Yes nice point yes that is the reason. Yes. So, nilpotent finite type k algebra. So, you should so any any uh, algebraic set corresponds to a uh, reduce. So, it does not have nilpotent means it is a reduce. Reduce finite type k algebra, it corresponds to a reduce k finite type. So, you can ask the converse that if I start with a any reduced finite type k algebra, whether it is a regular function it is a coordinate ring of some algebraic set. Not only that if I have map between k algebra of this type whether that corresponds to map of algebraic sets or not. So, in some sense find uh, the uh, algebraic set category which is affine f affine k and the uh, uh, category of finitely generated k algebra where morphism are homomorphism k algebra homomorphism of reduced uh, and uh, finite type they are equivalent that is a theorem. So, that is a that is a major theorem which is a which is used again and again ok. Yes, they can be isomorphic as a final yes mm, yes we will yeah tomorrow we will see some examples that one affine one algebraic set is embedded in suppose a, a 1. For example, if you take the parabola and take the line, you will see that they are isomorphic. This is the isomorphic yes, affine algebraic sets. So, you do not. So, like in homeo uh, topology also you see the two different objects, they are completely different, but they are homeomorphic. Similarly, here also they look they are given by two different set of equation, even in this different set of variable and also in the ambient space, but they are isomorphic. So, that is possible. So, we do not distinguish such up to isomorphic. So, so, ultimate goal is to classify whenever you define some object up to our goal is up to classify uh, I up to isomorphism, but later you will see that is very difficult when you go to higher dimension it is not possible. So, that is why birational classification or some more weaker condition you give not just isomorphism. So, you classify objects in up to that or equivalence. But, uh, but those things are I will when I do examples you will see plenty of such things happen ok. So, this is a remark the, uh, the k algebra arising from algebraic sets they are finite type and they are they do not have nil potent. Mm. Finitely generated k algebra yeah. generated k algebra. Which isomorphism? Algebraic sets, yeah, yeah, they come from regular morphism. See, v, v to W, you say AF, if W is in AM and this is in AN, so map this is called regular morphism.
and when this v to k when you identify w with k then you call regular map or regular function. So, in some sense regular morphisms are bunch of regular function. So, when you give a map from R n to R m. So, basically you give a map from R n to R you take projection to each yeah exactly same. So, regular so regular functions are basic and you construct a regular morphism out of regular function. So, it is a tuple of regular function. So, when you when you see as a regular morphism you think as that it is a tuple of regular uh, functions. So, if you understand regular functions well you have you 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 can identify yeah. So, is it clear?